Hello, dear friends, and welcome back to the International Fab Talks. Thank you for being a part of our journey, and thank you for connecting us with the world. Today, we are connected with Africa. Guess which part of Africa? It's West Africa. Sierra Leone, if I'm getting the word right, the name of the country. Yes, sir, am I right, sir? Yes, how sweet of you. So my friends, our guest is all the way from West Africa, from Sierra, uh, Sierra Leone, or Leon as it is called. He is Mr. Morris. We'll get to know about this young gentleman. First, let's welcome our special celebrity on stage. Hello, sir, and welcome to the session. Guys, welcome. And thank you for having me. It is a honor for me to speak and I also share my story in this platform. Yes, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for taking uh, the step ahead and accepting the invitation and being a part of our journey. We would love to bond with the world. We believe that the world is one. There is no war and there's only peace. And there are lots of unsung heroes across the world. And today, our unsung hero is a special person who's out here to share his views on life and his profession. Dear sir, with your permission, I shall go ahead and introduce you in an official way. May I do that, sir? Yes, sir. May I do that, sir? Am I audible? It's okay. It's okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you. I wanted yeah, that yeah, message yeah. from you. Go ahead. Yes, that's wonderful. Hey, friends, here we are with Mr. Musa Morris Momo Karbo. He is a human rights officer attached to the Directorate of Migration and Human Trafficking in his country, Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone. And our sir, the celebrity today who has joined us from West Africa, he also works as the vice president for the Sierra Leone Association of Social Workers. And this young gentleman would love to give his very best to the entire world. He would like to focus on the lives of the people in his community. He would want to stop the flesh trade. He would want to stop, you know, the uh, illegal human trafficking that is going on in many parts of the world. And he would like to focus his, his energies and bring back a balance in the lives of people. We find many of the youngsters out wanting to enjoy either in clubs or entertainment places and zones or, you know, taking off on solo trips. But here is a young gentleman giving his entire thought process, his hard work and perseverance to make a mark as a social worker and a change maker. He wants to transform lives. And yes, he's going to transform us too with his great thoughts and views. Hello, sir, and welcome to the session. Thank you for having me once more. I'm, I'm really honored to share my perspective as far as social work is concerned. I'm really, really opportune to be here and share different perspective Africa perspective and Sierra Leone to be specific. You know, the way we do things is completely different. The way Indian or other. Yes, yes. Yes. Am I audible? Bring us together at our community, at our community. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. Dear sir, how would you define yourself? Who is the real Morris? Yes, sir. Is all well with you? Yes, my dear friends, our guest will join us in just a few moments. We just wait for our special celebrity. It's patience, right? Yes, dear sir. Yeah, we shall wait for our special guest to join us. I did not have that special. Yes, friends, our guest is back. Our celebrity is with us. There was a slight technical snag, and we are back again. Dear sir, would you want to once again define who you are? We would love to know from you as to who the real Musa Morris is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, as you, you mentioned my name, I am Musa Maurice Momokabo. 
Sierra Leonean, and uh, Sierra Leone is found in West Africa. And um, so, over the years, I've dedicated my life to serve my community and my country. So after my, my, my high school, of course, I spent most of my life in rural community in the northwestern part of Sierra Leone, which is a Cambia district and number of chiefdom to be specific. So after my high school, I moved to the capital, which is Freetown, to pursue higher education because uh, the love I have for education I have to migrate in 2010 to pursue higher education. And then, so I did a bachelor's degree in, in social work. You know, as I said. Yes, sir. To let me actually to yes. study social work. You know, those three, there's no law, there's no policy. There is no. Yes, sir. They can push a social work profession. So after my graduation in twenty seventeen. Yes, sir. I guess there's a light technical issue at from your side. Yes. So I joined in work around social work in terms of promote people to know the importance of that is and keep with the social integrated into our society to respond to the needs of our community, our country. It is really, really important, but government and the society as a whole did not able to embrace at that time. So in 2007, as I said, I joined an organization called Social Workers Sierra Leone, a small organization that was promoting the social work profession in the country. So I volunteered there and I was serving as a program officers. So we put together a lot of programs, seminars, invite Sierra Leoneans in the diasporas to come and discuss with the students and the community and the government at that time. So, because my interest after my graduation was uh, how to advocate for a policy framework, a law and policy framework for social work to be integrated in our society. So all my time I spent, first of all, we push for us to have an association that can be able to advocate for social workers and also promote <clears throat> the interest of um, the, the, the profession in the country. So that I've been doing over the years at, at national level, at community level also, I've been initiating program. Of course, I am the vice president of um, our school, my secondary school. So all of us that have been in the higher education, we are now together, putting resources together, sometimes to respond by sending qualified students that graduated, particularly in the sciences, go and serve. And uh, also we put resources together by school materials, support uh, students that are doing extremely well in the school. It's a kind of motivation. So, so far, <laughs> that is me. You know, they, I can talk and talk and talk and talk, but let me just stop yes. there for now as we just yes. started the conversation. Yes, sir. I get that. Thank you very much for sharing. Dear sir, human trafficking, you work on these lines too, as to what is it? Could we get an idea into what you are into actually and how you save lives? <clears throat> human trafficking is a very serious problem in a country uh, because of the economic situation, because of the poverty level, so people see like a migration as a way out of poverty. Yes, sir. So we have some other people also exploit this situation. Where yes, young sir. Young people see this country, 
go in in the in lucrative jobs because sometimes these traffickers or agents that lure young people share stories about opportunities job opportunities in in the middle east in 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 in, in the diaspora in the west different different countries so they exploit these young people sometimes what they are they are telling them is far from the reality unless when they have taken them from the country and just abandon them some other even though that succeed, succeeded particularly those uh, working in the middle east the conditions they work in a very terrible conditions no human rights you know they don't have time to rest all of those things you know so it's a very serious problem but uh government has taken deliberate steps by putting laws policies together and uh, for our work we we'll leverage on those laws and policies to ensure that uh, or make perpetrators accountable. Yes, sir. So I, I think, hope I answered the question well. Yes, yes, you answered it very well and to the, uh, to the point. Now, are these people who have been traffic, uh, trafficked uh, are being taken for job purpose and they are they've been misused over there or what could it be? How how could you give us a clarity as to how innocent people yes. are, how gullible people are to fall into this trap? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, um, uh, as I said, you know, when a country cannot be able to care, particularly for young people in terms of job, you know, so anybody can just come and, and create stories. Mostly they, they deceive these young people about opportunities. What's the age so group, when, sir, that are uh, some the even, age group? Ranging from 18, 18 and 30 and above. You know, these are the active young people that that desperate to make better life. And they think that they cannot make it in their country. So this agent or, 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 or can can use that opportunity and build stories about opportunities, job opportunities. So they lure them and take them out of the countries. Some end up in 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 in, uh, in transit countries. Some end up in their destination countries. But what is not what is not um, what is not what is the problem in all of this transaction is about human rights of these victims, since the uh, their movement is illegal. So traffickers exploit them a lot, either by sexual, either by labor, and some other cases. So right now, as I said, like last year, because we have a anti-trafficking act that was established in in two thousand and five. So last year they they review that act, they repeal that act and replace it with a, a new act now that as more punishment compared to the previous one. So right now, what we are doing is to monitor institutions that are supposed to take action, like the police, like the court, you know, to ensure that when these traffickers are arrested, they, they, they face the consequences of what, the consequences of their actions, I mean, Yes, yes. Thank you very much for sharing because there's a need to enlighten people, to empower people in the right way and not to trap them. Yes, sir. I'm very proud of you that you are doing this job of, you know, bringing back balance in the lives of the youngsters, the vulnerable people in your community, in your country and across the world, of course, by sharing your the space today with us and explaining all of this, that the agents, they lure young people they, a deceptive in a deceptive way they give them beautiful thoughts and stories to believe that they would get better jobs not in their country but out of their country but once they cross the borders of their country you know that's the problem where they face hell and the owners who give them jobs or the employers harass them in different ways if they don't get jobs the agents take advantage of them as the various ways you've said they could be exploited sexually even, even if they get the job, job they are not 
paid according Property. to you what wages. they are doing. Yes. Of course, as I said, no human rights values, no time for rest, no vacation. No. Completely, they are just exploiting them completely. Yes. So it's a very big problem right now, particularly women's, young women's, we that um, went to the Middle East, you know, some done some are stranded right now so we have been always a uh, collaborate with the IOM Sierra Leone here and advocate for those that are stranded and take them back you know so IOM will reintegrate them give them package particularly those that already have like a business idea so you can put your business idea so IOM will give you a package to start a business so that you will not think about leaving your country, particularly that, that form of irregular migration. You know, because the problem just lies on lack of opportunities. And young people think that uh, they can only able to make meaningful life out of their country. So that is the problem. Yes. And uh, for us, we are not against migration. What our focus is regular migration. Migrate in a regular way. That is the time your human rights will be respected. You know, like if you want to travel, ensure that you have a passport, you have the right document, and also verify the program. So that is the kind of um, awareness raising we are doing and partnering with other organizations that's in the field of migration and human trafficking. Superb, sir. Really awesome. I really like the way you people are working so hard to make the youngsters, to make the people of your country migrate in a lawful way, not in an illegal way. You know, if they at all, at all. Facts, yes. Have the facts, figures right, and have everything in place such that you are respected and your human rights are not violated or taken advantage of. That's really nice. Yes, dear. Mm -hmm. Dear sir, while performing all of your duties, while performing all of your duties, you might face or you might have been facing a lot of criticisms or criticism or ups and downs, a lot of challenges. How do you face all of these challenges? Some people may agree to what you say. Some people may disagree. Some people may hate you. Some people would want to eliminate you because this is a dangerous place where you're working. The agents could be there out at you wanting to get back at you. What are the type of challenges you face in your job? Um, um, basically, you know, like this kind of um, business is like a big business in, 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 in our country. So they know human trafficking globally is a big business. It's a big cartel. And a lot of people, sometimes even people within government, they are also part of the movement, but it's very difficult for identify them, you know. So most of the challenges we we have challenges with the agent, you know. Sometimes because I remember there are a group of uh, business companies here, like uh, QNet, one business company here named QNet. Initially, they register as a business. So the, their business is a kind of network wherein they recruit people for them to buy their product. So when, when you join the network, you buy the product, and also you have to bring other people to come and buy the product. So when they come and buy the product, whatever profit the company make, you'll have some percentage. So that is how they started to operate. But um, they changed this strategy to recruit people for overseas program. So they can now meet these vulnerable young people that they have programs to travel to overseas. All you need to do, you need to pay like um, $500, like for you to move from Sierra Leone to Canada, Germany, and I think across the, 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 the Europe, across Europe. So because young people, they know even we are, some of them don't even have a passport, they don't even know about travel, no travel experience. But since 
some of their colleagues that either they might travel through regular way sometimes they see they share their photos the way they see them so they they have that kind of perception that they, they can only able to make a life when they left their country so this 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 uh, company they use this kind of opportunity to recruit people collecting money in the pretext but what they are telling them uh, for example we have a program for travel to canada pay 500 dollars but when you pay that money they will not give you receipts all that they can tell you just put your, your stuff together and move to our office you know so when you come to to the office what they will do they will they will start to give you some training some um, unrealistic training just to keep you for you to believe that uh, the program is real so as time passed by they will ask you again to to contact any of your friends to, to canada or germany a case may be so at the end of the day they will generate uh, overseas numbers and use whatsapp so when you when you send that kind of message to somebody that is closer to you automatically will believe that uh, this person has traveled and the program is real while in the real sense you are still in the country so this is the kind of strategy they have been using over the years to recruit a lot of young people across the country so of these complaints we we record these complaints and then we involve the police arrested the team leaders so when they come the kind of statement they will they, they, they will say is that uh, they are not they are not a, a a travel agent organization what they do they sell product so at the end of the day since they are already start business it's very difficult to track their business because they because even the transaction they are having they do not give receipts they can just record your name so what we can do when we arrested them because of lack of evidence you know so we just advocate that uh, they pay back the money and we advise we advise these young people never to think of this kind of venture so that one is a very big challenge we are having you know this company registered as a legal business company in sierra leone but the messages the way they, they sell their products has created a big problem. So for us, again, that uh, monitor government agencies that are supposed to take action. But when the evidence is not there, like the courts, most of these cases, the courts kick them out of the court because of, because of no evidence. Sometimes even those that have enough evidence, even to come back and testify is a serious problem. So these are some of the issues. And also we have also challenged with them, even the, the, the perpetrators, sometimes when they arrested them and put to custody, we also ensure that uh, their human rights also respected, like over detention. We engage the police. If this person has spent like them, like for capital offenses, 10 days, maximum 10 days, you have to be in detention. After that, they have to they have to release you on bail as long as you have a sortie that can uh, meet the bail condition they have to to release you as they are as they are investigating the matter and write to the pp office that is the office that's responsible to review this statement and recommend if the matter is supposed to be proceed to court so these are some of the, the challenges and the other challenges is um, uh, most mostly is our movement you know our, our organization our is a government agency though an independent government agency but sometimes uh, this the, the logistical support you know so those are some of the few challenges i encounter but uh, largely people appreciate what we are doing because we have we have 
impact a lot of a lot, lot of um, young people and um, I mean it's a gradual process Yes, dear sir. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. You gave us a lot of clarity, the challenges that you face and how do you manage the challenges all together, you know, responsible for bringing a change amongst the masses. Dear sir, what inspired you to enter into this field? Why did you enter into this field? Yes, you know, social work, you, you, have, you have to be passionate about contributing to 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 your community and the country particularly vulnerable populations so for me being a social worker and also finding myself in in in, in an area dealing with vulnerable population you know it gives gives me fulfillment because at the end of the day when i make people smiles people who have been in a very stressful situation like for example those young lady that have been taken to the Middle East for job opportunities. So after being there, they face a lot of exploitation. So when we facilitated to bring back those young women to gain their freedom, you know, seeing their their their, their relatives, their family members, you know, at the airport, the way they smile, that gives me a lot of fulfillment. And even when they come back. We ensure that uh, we're able to do assessment for those of them. Because what we are doing is to prevent the problem for them not to involve in this kind of in this kind of mess, because I call it a mess. Because if you are going for opportunity, by the end of the day, you find yourself in an exploitative environment. You know? So it will become so terrible. You feel like uh, you don't, you don't, you don't, you're being, living is like a waste of time. Always thinking you know, of ending your life, you know. So, so, and uh, contributing to restore some of these people's lives, some of these young girls' lives, you know, give me a lot of fulfillment at the end of the day. So my passion actually just tied down in a, uh, <clears throat> fulfilling, contributing to other people's life, contributing to my country, to my community, to become a better. You know, that is my actual uh, passion. Uh, that is what is driving me, even though sometimes I can even come late hours to my, to my home. But when I wake up in the morning again, I will be so energetic to go back, you know. So these are some of the, the things that drive my passion. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Much appreciated, sir. Thank you very much. Is there any book that you would love to suggest today that, yes, if you read this book, it could inspire you and change your life? It could impact your thought process as well? Can you come again? A nice book. The title and the author of uh, any interesting book which could influence us and change our thought pattern or, you know, when we read it, we could get something out of it. Yeah, you know, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books. Any one uh, favorite book of yours? Yes. Um, there's this book called... It has taken some time, but uh, he has a oh, lot of Oh, you could just share like this. Are these books connected to character building or are these books regarding uh, psychological health or are these books yes. regarding history? It's what a building, it's building resilient about making a change. You know, because most people, as for me, what I find out over the years, you know, every human being has the capability or sometimes the resilience because anything you started there is challenges but what will keep you pushing until you have your desired goal that is what is lacking to a lot of young people 
and also some people some young people think that life is is about luck you can just wake up one day and every you have everything you know so some of these issues are very difficult to deal with particularly in our country for me a lot of people a lot of young people my colleagues admire admire me a lot and some of them they think it is a lock but sometimes when we sit together and discuss i share with them my story you know born in rural community left there when i came to freetown i spent like 12 years just struggle 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 but um what is important was uh, yes yes sir, it's fine how i want my life to be so i keep pushing i keep pushing i keep pushing even at the moment we are still pushing and this year this year we were able to have the association over many years we have we have a member of our group that registered with IFSW in 2016. But uh, when he registered, Sierra Leone became a member of IFSW. But within the country, that membership was not recognized. So all these years, we have been having conversation, conversation, how do we ensure that also government own social work profession and take it very serious. So we have to engage government through the ministry of social welfare over the years so until last year this year march we agree for us to come together and we organize conference a big conference we are in the ministry of social welfare spearheaded and unicef supported us puts concept together and invites students social work practitioners social work and educators all of us come together to have a conversation on how we want our profession to be. So we agree, we discuss on the constitution, we discuss on the ethics and some other things. So at the, at the end of the day, we agree in all of that and we have a document presented to government. We register now the association fully in the country. So, and also we write to IFSW that this is the group now and they, they also publish our, our conference report so i mean and up to this point we are not get, we are not having any penny out of that even the position i'm serving is, is based on voluntary but we spend a lot of time because at the end of the day if we have social work you know being recognized and integrated in, in our society because for now social work is the biggest profession in the country in terms of graduates every year we have a lot of grad, uh, young people graduating as social workers but no job because government is yet to recognize we have also been pushing for a law and governments have, 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 have put a law a draft law together which we are also being popularized to see that social workers have been the same so in all of this just to 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 like uh, also also discuss why the need for young people to believe in themselves and also to believe that uh, you cannot wake one day everything happen it will take time it will take energy effort and everything you know so for the books i will have to check back maybe i will I will share a number of books with you. Yes dear. yes, dear sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Dear sir, how would you want to be remembered in this world? And why should people remember Musa Morris? Okay. If, if, yes, sir. If you are still not comfortable. Yes, sir. It's fine. It's fine. Please go ahead. Okay. How would you want to be remembered in this world and why should people remember you? So that aspect again is very important to me. So the way I see the world, any any kind of material things you have, 
on this earth. You will have to die one day. And to me, what is important to me, how do you want people to remember you? So whatever you do, people can remember you. But do you want to be remembered? So <laughs> the consciousness about me being remembered in a good way, that is another aspect again that is driving me to continue to do my best in contributing to humanity. Beautiful. Contributing because life is short-lived. And no amount of money or no amount of um, material things will stop you for you not to, 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 for you to, your life to be cut off one day. So what is important to me is the contribution of other people's life, particularly young people's. How can I contribute to their life for them to become successful? particularly those that face challenges. We are living in a country where in services, service delivery, delivery is a very big problem, you know, and the level of poverty is high. So even for young persons to be able to survive here, it's very difficult. You have to go the extra mile. So that kind of little efforts we are doing on daily basis to ensure that uh, other people's you, you impact other people's life, even in a way, just have a conversation with them, just sharing your story with them, or share whatever little thing you have with them, just for them to to gain their consciousness about their potential as human being and also what how they can be able to capitalize on the potential on the opportunities that surround them so that is very important aspect as far as i'm living now what is important to me is about continue to contribute to my community and my country as large in terms of uh, impacting other people's life for them to become better persons hats off to you to your brilliant answer sir that's really very nice i like the way you put all of that with lots of clarity you would love to be a great contributor to your community and to your country at large and of course today you're sharing the space on the international fab talks you're creating a vast impact across the world Congratulations. That's really nice. And I would love many of the youngsters to follow your path, to be contributors, not only to wait and receive something, you should also be able to give back something something to the society, dear friends. Yes, dear sir, that really makes you extra special and a celebrity. In fact, sir, what is that one thing that you love about yourself? This is me, Musa Morris, and I like myself. And this is my inner core quality. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing that the thing that I like about myself is resilient. Sometimes people think that I do not face challenges on daily basis, but uh, always, <laughs> to me, what is more important to me is to focus on the things that I can be control, things that are able to control. So things that I have limited control, I spend less effort and time on them in trying to change them. Why I keep focus on the things that I can control. I spend most of my time and energy on the things that I have control over. So that's resilience of staying focused, even numerous challenges is what I like about myself and that same quality I want also to 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 share with my colleagues for them always to see opportunities in the midst of challenges and how they can be able to capitalize on those opportunities rather than 
put their energy on the challenges, particularly challenges they have control over. Yeah, I really like the way you really mentioned everything, sir. You said capitalize on all the challenges. Focus on the challenges and transform them into opportunities. And that's your strength. And you said resilience. That also you mentioned at the start. So being a resilient person, finding an opportunity in every problem that you face or in every, every challenge, you could transform it into something beautiful to your benefit. I really like the way you put all of that. You have a lot of clarity and lots of wisdom at this young age. In fact, when uh, I was at your age, maybe I wouldn't have thought all of this. Mm -hmm. You are quite, uh, you have a lot of wisdom. You, I think I've gained a lot of experience. It's really nice, sir. Through watching or maybe through reading and connecting with people, networking, you have a brilliant mind. Dear sir, you, you said you would love to share all of this with your colleagues too. We keep your colleagues aside and now we come down to friendship. According to you, who are those good friends who have been with you through thick and thin? Would you like to mention a few of their names today on the platform? Yes, I have a number of friends, you know. Sometimes even the way I identify people that I call my friends also determine the quality of my life today. You know, anybody that I want to to associate myself, I have to do a background study about the persons and based on our interaction, our, his, his actions, his or our actions, and also behavior and see how that's aligned to my values. So if all of these things are not present in the persons, yes, I might not hate that person, but I might a bit have some boundaries. We can talk, we can discuss, but I spend most of my time with friends that we share similar characters, similar values, you know, and I have those kind of friends that right? they cannot be exactly me, you know, because everybody is unique on his or our own. But sometimes I look at the similarities in terms of how I want to see my life in the next three, four, or ten years. Because that is also every year I reevaluate myself what I want to see as far as my life is concerned in terms of the quality, in terms of the impact I will be making. Yes. In, within my 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 my, my cycle. Yes, Dings. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. And my friends, if people don't click with you, they don't vibe with you, then you have to place boundaries. You shouldn't let anyone take advantage of your good nature or you shouldn't take advantage of their good nature as well. And if no, somebody's no, no, no. toxic, keep the boundaries in place. Excellent, sir. Dear sir, what is smart work and hard work to you? How would you differentiate that? Okay. <laughs> so hard work and particularly our current situation now at global level, hard work is not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I guess we have a slight no. technical snag. Of Friends, we shall wait for our celebrity to join us. He's joining us from West Africa, Sierra, Sierra Leone. Smart work. Yes, sir. Work cannot take you nowhere. Some hard work cannot take you nowhere. So sometimes the quality of time you spend in in, in certain work and what kind of uh, objectives do you want to achieve. So all of that, you have to put them into perspective if you want to achieve. I, for example, before having this conversation, I know that you already have a talking point. What do you want me to 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 to, to say? So even if I'm not going exactly, I want that. You can check and bring me back. So every work you are doing, you have to have that in mind.
So smart work, as I said, is, is the new work as far as if you want to succeed. Hard work, <laughs> we don't we don't to consider that if you actually you, you want to make impact. Because there are a lot of distraction, a lot of distraction. So unless you have to organize yourself very well, whatever you want to achieve, and then you have to be smart. Smart work is the most important right now. And we have all the tools now. AI has made it very easy for us to do whatever we want to do as far as we want to make that kind of impact. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. Dear sir, what brings a smile to your face? Yes, I think I've answered this question. Most time, what makes me smile and feel good when I church life, when I'm able to assist people that in a difficult situation, I bring smiles to them. You know, I feel good for that. Sometimes I don't feel good based on my achievement or the material things I have, or you know, I most likely feel good, feel emotional when I'm able to contribute to other people in terms of making their life meaningful. And that is what I have been doing over the years, you know. So that is what makes me smile. Yes, an excellent answer. Dear sir, any weakness? Yes, <laughs> I have weaknesses, I have weaknesses. So my weakness is mostly lies on, um, you know, somebody who like to help and i face this mostly even in the workplace sometimes people want to exploit that kind of uh, that kind of personality of me that i like i like to help people people that need help you know so sometimes i will take it take me difficult to 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 draw boundary to know that ah this person is actually exploiting me. So because I like helping people, helping people, so most people will want to turn that in a kind of exploitative situation, like exploiting me now. Ah, yeah, this guy likes to help, so I have to keep on using him, using him. You know, so mostly that is my weakness. Sometimes for me to draw the boundary, for me to pick the persons that, ah, this persons, they are, they are taking this thing too far. But over the years, I have been, give that a thought, thought, you know. So, I mean, that is one of my, my weakness. Yes, dear sir. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for being so frank and so honest with that reply. Thank you so much. Dear sir, is there anything that scares you? Yes, <laughs> I have three things that scares me. And uh, the number one thing is um, public speaking. I'm still struggling, you know, to face the public. So sometimes it it take it it will take like five, three to five minutes before I can fully be confident whenever I face the public. You know, but uh, over the years, with um, practice, practice, because the work I'm doing, I'm always up to face with either the media or public space, either uh, seminars, conferences, to make speech, you know, things like that. So I have been trying to overcome that kind of fear, you know. And uh, before this time again, I have this dream that I used to dream, like seeing myself going back to my village in the dream. So when I wake up, you know, yeah, and religious interpretation to that, they say that uh, it's a kind of backwardness when you dream going back to a village. So that kind of dream also used to scare me a lot. So when I wake up, so I think that ah my my village people are after me, 
you know, even when I'm in Freetown, they still come back and trying to, to, to take me back to the village. Is it thought like that? You know, but um, that again, <laughs> what, what make me to, to overcome that? So I just think about if I'm, I'm from the US or Europe countries, Yes. I develop if I dream and I be able to explain that, you know. So at the end of the day, I just take it as a dream, you know. So these are a few of the things that scared me. Yes, yes. But you are an awesome speaker. You have a lot of good talent when you speak. You use the right kind of words and that's really great. Yes. You have a good flow when you speak. There's a, yes, there's over the years, you know, doing <laughs> Doing, doing this repeat, repeatedly, you know, even when he invited me, that is why, because I see all of this again as an opportunity for me to co keep on building on my public speaking uh, skills, you know, so I don't turn down any opportunity that I think can be able to contribute in making me, because as a leader, public speaking is one quality you have to possess, you have to face the public. Yes, yes. So who is your role model? Who would you love to imitate or who would you love to follow or who you consider as your role model? Yes. Um, um, um. All the people that I consider as role model are those people who are not in love with material things. People in love with um, making meaningful contribution to their communities, and to society as large. So I don't admire people who has money, material things, no. I admire people that make the deliberate effort to make the world a better place by either building institution, by contributing in whatever means, as far as that kind of contribution can, can reflect on making society a better place. I admire those people. You know, and uh, like, like in my community, there is a European family that came to our community and established a school. This secondary school I attended. You know, these German people left their country. They come and stay to our village for like ten years. Built a school in a community that was um, no form of Western education. But when they came, very dark place at that time, they stayed there, spend their time, resources, and contribute. And today, because of that secondary school, light has been in the community because the school has produced lots of Yes. nationalities who are contributing across the globe every regime of our government national government we have people from the school that can either be ministers that can be members of parliament that's whole key government positions you know so i always reflect to to those family and i consider those family as one of my biggest role model currently I have been putting an information together. I'm trying to write a book about the family. <laughs> it's, 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 they established the school in 1968. So after many years, I did not know the family, except the stories they used to, 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 to tell us about these people. So I have spent about almost three years now gathering information, you know, because I admire those family. They have transformed my community, including, and that effort continue to, to transform life. Because even right now, all the students that are attending, because the community was a very poor community. Most of community members did not have the resources to take their, their kids. To secondary school, you know, so largely those are the kind of people I admire. Yes, yes. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you for having gratitude towards those people who have been contributing to the growth of your country, your community as well. That's really nice. Dear sir, would you like to share with us now a favorite quotation or a proverb? Um, I have this quotation. Maybe I cannot remember the exact words, but uh, I can give you the contextual meaning of that quotation. And uh, I think Les Brown that says this quotation, he was trying to say that um, the graveyard is the richest place on earth. <clears throat> Why the graveyard is the richest place on earth? He said because there are many people who have fantastic ideas, but they do not have the, the, the resilience to transform those ideas to reality. So they end up dying with all of those beautiful ideas, beautiful books, beautiful. So many, many beautiful things that should have contributed to make the life, to make the world a better place. And they die with, with that. So that kind of thoughts, that kind of a um, uh, phrase always live with, within myself to always do my best whatever cha talent have to contribute so that i cannot die with that so he is preaching that uh, people have to die empty don't die with your idea don't die with your cha talent translate your talent to reality so that your talent can be able to to contribute in making the world a better place Excellent. I really love that. I love the way you shared it. You know, which are the richest places in the world? It's the graveyard. Yes. And that is quite bone chilling to listen. But then when you gave us a beautiful explanation of all of it, superb. Awesome. Dear sir, till date, what is the proudest accomplishment that you've achieved? The wow feeling. Yes. Wow. I did this and I feel good. Yes. Um... Mm -hmm. You know, as I told you about um, this this uh, German family that came to our village and established the school. So also the school, over the years, you know, African, we lack maintenance culture and also how do we keep some of the important things in our community? How do we maintain them and keep them alive? So when I took up this this project, it's a passionate project. Nobody supported me, you know. Go back to the community, interview people, and people share with me their thoughts about these families, how they used to do things in the community, how they able to galvanize the community, build the school, and also get the support of the community. So this project. Even though I'm yet to publish the book, for some time, the feedback I'm getting, because I used to share some of the thoughts on my Facebook page, you know, sometimes when I uh, interview, like, past students about their perspective, about uh, the family, you know, when I share a few thoughts, the way people, you know, the feedback they are giving me, that makes me so happy, you know, because... The school has produced a lot of people, educated people, but nobody thought about put this idea together so that generation to come will learn about this family. The sacrifice they make to change a community and the country at, at, at large. That is one key event that make me happy. So the other thing again, like every year, like I said, I am the vice president of the old student association of my school, the younger generation, I mean. So every year we, 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 we can identify a need in the school. So we put resources together and go back and, 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 and support the school, you know. So when those, events again are accomplished. You know, I feel so happy because 
are able to like church lives. There are kids currently whose situation was whose situation is really challenging. Like for example, every end of the year we buy school materials and uh, give to those students that did extremely well. Like if your report card has all blue with no red, like you pass all the subjects. We give you school materials that you can use for the rest of the year. So some of these events, you know. So when also like I able to to mobilize, like uh, this year, Mashi Ship, you know Mashi Ship, right? Yes. So Mashi Ship come back to Sierra Leone. And uh, before coming, they, they do registration. They registered people that meet the, the medical condition they will be treating. And because they only focus on, on they only focus district level, they send their staff at this, this district level. So if you cannot, if you don't have the means to go to the district headquarters for you to be registered, you can you cannot be able to have the opportunity for you to be treat treat your illness. So, but uh, one of my schoolmates happened to be the officers that Mashi Ship recruited to register people. So I have to influence her. Yes. For her to go back to my village and ensure that those people that cannot be able to come to the district headquarters to register. Yes. Register them. And they go there and they mobilize big programs program the parliament chief was yes they are uh, and registered people people nurses they do not have the means you know so that's kind of event again make me smile make me feel good about myself and then you know i mean these are these are some of the things that that, that can make me happy always always yeah when my 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 life able to impact other people's you know yes. let me put on the lights quick yes dear thank you so much sir for sharing all of that how many languages are you conversant in how many languages are you conversant in sir repeat my question how many languages are you conversant in what how many languages are you conversant in? Uh, yeah, English is one, Creole, and plus one of um, our local languages, which is Timni. Yes, sir. So, I would like you to share a nice song with us today. Would you oblige to sing a song for us in any one of these languages? Please? <laughs> I'm not too good in... <laughs> Give it a try. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let me just greet first in, in the local language. Yes, please. from So I mean, I mean, I mean, only a booty car carpet go on a one a tense a life and me or come on come on a fight. So, more color name or like my snake way from the bonnet and then go to your and putting. Yes. yes, thank you very much for sharing that. That was really a beautiful sharing in the local language. That is really wonderful. Dear sir, the next question. If you were given a chance to relive somebody's life, whose life you would love to relive? 
this question is a bit challenging for me because you know every life is unique perfect every life is unique and then um, it's very difficult to live somebody's life because we are all humans but what i like you don't like so to me I, I always want to associate i cannot be somebody else i always be me but there are some qualities i see on other people that i can make part of myself my being you know so it's difficult to live somebody's life it's very difficult so i don't even i don't believe that if actually you want to be that kind of person and you believe that you, you will live somebody's life it's, it's very difficult because human beings we are unique in nature so every person is unique yes because of um, the differences similarities but what is important is how do you able to accommodate other people even though you, you don't see the same you don't do things the same but it's still he still should have the the courage to accommodate people that have different perspective yes 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 sir. thank you very much for sharing that's really very nice dear sir we've come to an end to the main round of the interview for today we have a small segment called as the rapid fire round, which will take another 10 minutes. Would you mind me taking another 10 minutes, please? Yes, sir. Yes, dear sir. Would you allow me to take 10 minutes? Am I audible? Yes, come again. Uh, it's now the end of the main round of the interview. We have a small segment called as the rapid fire round. Could I take another okay. two minutes from you? Yeah, yeah. In the rapid fire round, you just have to answer in one word. You just have to make a selection. One or two words at the max. And uh, you would, this segment gets over within 10 minutes. Maybe go ahead. Sir. So, Maybe go mm, ahead. I still do not get it. Now, see, I'll just put up a question. I still do not. Yeah, I'll explain that to you. This mm -hmm. is a small segment called as the rapid fire round, where you have to answer very quickly. Mm -hmm. The first word that comes to your mind, you should quickly share that word. You should make a choice quickly. I'll give you some options. You have to make a choice quickly. For example, okay. mm -hmm. the first question goes like this. The favorite day of the week. There are seven days. Your favorite day. Monday. Great. Your favorite number? Number number three. Is it tea or coffee? Uh, coffee. Yeah, I like coffee. Coffee. You like to call or text? Which one you are comfortable with? Calling, texting. I like text. I like text. Texting. Great. The insect that you don't like? The things I don't like. And... Insect. The insect. Oh, like cockroaches. Cockroaches. Cockroach. Yes. Many of them have a hatred towards the cockroach. Mm, yes. Yeah. Sir, is it cakes, chocolates, or ice cream? First pick. First choice. I like chocolates. I like chocolates. I don't yes. I don't like um sweet yes. things that sweet. Yes. This round is just one word. Just one word. And what about your favorite season? Yeah, yeah, I like rainy season. Yes, dear. Is it the is it the land uh, roadways, railways, waterways, or airways? I like waterways. Great. You love to stay in a city, a village, or a little town? Yeah, I like I like the village. I like the village setting. When you help others, do you expect anything in return? No, 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 no. I don't help to 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 get anything from anybody. I do help. Yes. 
I know that uh, when you help, somebody else will help you. Wow, beautiful. That's perfect. Dear sir, in one word, how would you explain a beautiful day? Or how would you share your thought on a be beautiful day in just one word? Mm, a beautiful day to me, accomplishment. Wow, that's beautiful. Accomplishment. What a way to answer that. Dear sir, a life skill. Are you good at cooking? No, I don't like cooking. <laughs> the name of your favorite teacher when you were in school? Uh, my, let me say my principal, Mr. I.S. Kaloko, Ibrahim S. Kaloko. Yes. Install a lot of good things in us at that time. Yes. Thank you for sharing. Are you an early riser or a night owl? What? Are you an early bird, an early riser or a night owl? Night, night. Salty, sweet, spicy or sour food? Spicy. I like spicy. Life is all about money, happiness. Anyone? Happiness. You consider yourself to be an introvert, an extrovert, or ambivert? I'm an extrovert. Extrovert. You, when you are alone and you have no gadgets around you, none of your family members, friends are with you, you're alone. And when you're alone, most of us, when we are alone, we are connected to our thoughts. We begin to think. Where do your thoughts take you? Do they keep you busy with the present situation or are you connected with the past? Memories or with the future uh, thoughts? Yes, I like to spend time alone because that is the best time for me to be able to organize my thoughts in terms of reflecting from the past and the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the, the, the best moment for me when I'm alone. I like to spend time alone. That is why I like the village. Sometimes I go to the bush, just observe nature, the way things are happening. Yes. Thank you for sharing. You love socializing or me time? That is it. So, is it socializing or me time? Yeah, I like socializing. Yes. Socializing. You are a thinker, pardon? What? You are a thinker or a doer? Where do you find yourself doing? I think, I think a lot. I think a lot. Yes, dear. Is it experiential learning or theoretical learning? Experiential learning. I like to put things in practice rather than just yes, dear. Uh, theory, theory. Yes. Thank you. Fresh fruits or fried food? Fresh, always. Home cooked food or food ordered from out sometimes? Home cooked, home cooked. Yes. Is it the beach or the forest to spend some me time? Yes. Yeah. When I'm in Freetown, I spend most time in the beach, in the village, the forest. Yes. So, it's difficult to see forest again. Mm, great, great. That's really nice. So, uh, when you were in the city, has, has the, the city. What? Pardon? No, as, as I said, it's very difficult here to see forest again. Yes. Because of deforestation. Yes, very true. Very true. So, finding a forest is really great. And if you find one, that's a pleasure. And if you don't plant trees, that's the message. Dear sir, I have a cup in my hand. How do you look at this cup? Is it half full or half empty? Half full. Great. You like to sing or dance? I like dance. Great. Walking or a two-wheeler? What do you prefer? I like walking. I like walking. Yes. Do you love to give gifts? Or receive gifts? No, I like to give gifts. Yes. 
till date, what is the greatest gift that you've received? Uh, the, I think uh, in twenty in twenty twenty one. You know. I received a gift, and that's the very first time for me to celebrate birthday. Yes. You know, growing up in the in the village, those things are not common. Yes, sir. So coming to the city, I don't use that. So sometimes my birthday, <laughs> I don't even know. So birthday are things I consider less. <laughs> But my girlfriend insisted that ah, we need to celebrate this. And he did everything on, on her own, you know. So that one, that, that was so emotional to me to have that, that, that experience, you know. But my biggest gift so far is um, education. And all the people that contributed for me to be educated, including my teachers, even the German family that build the schools, you know, so all of those people. Yes, sir. I'm always grateful to them because they ensure that I have light today. Yes. I love the way you said this. The greatest gift is education. And that really opened my eyes for a moment. Yes, education is a great gift. If you've got that with you, you can really build your life in the right way. Dear sir, we would love now that you give us a gift. I want a gift from you for the International Fab Talk viewers and for me too and all our guests who are here. Share a gift with us. That is, give us three magical words. Apart from please, sorry and thank you. We would love you to share three magical words, three powerful words. You could take resilience, you could take power, you could take kindness. Any three words where we could focus our energies and bring a transformation in our lives. Just you have to okay. mention the positive words. Yes. So one is compassion, empathy, resilience. Perfect. Compassion, empathy, compassion. and resilience. Yes, sir? Resilience. Resilience. Compassion, empathy, and resilience, my friends. That is the beautiful message today our celebrity has given us. He has joined us from West Africa. And we have to be very thankful to him for taking out some time for us in spite of his busy schedule and all of that. Dear sir, thank you very much for being with us today. We look forward to many more interactions with you. Thank you and stay blessed. Thank you too for having me and allowing me to share my thoughts in this platform. I'm always welcome at any time. If you want me to share my thoughts because there is, I have a lot even in terms of social work in the country, there is a lot I can share with you and the platform for people also to know how we are, we are doing our social work here, you know. So I'm always welcome to, 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 to hear from you whatever engagement you want me. Yes. That's very nice of you. You have a large heart, sir. You have a big heart. And you would love to spread the good message across the world. And definitely we will have you back very soon on the International Fab Talks to share all your expertise. We know you are a person filled with wisdom, knowledge and courage. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Dear friends, with this, we come to an end to the International Fab Talks for today. But definitely we will bring back our special celebrity once again on the platform to share his views and thoughts and how you could be the next great social worker, the next transforming individual in your country or in your community thank you and stay safe and stay blessed thank you sir